the early 20th century saw the outbreak of some of the deadliest conflicts in history. World wars between global powers that left unimaginable suffering in their wake. Despite this, the period from the end of World War II to the present has been called the Long Peace, a somewhat ironic moniker given what it took to achieve that peace. For nuclear scientists and physicists in the early 20th century, years of theorizing and research culminated on July 16, 1945 in the Trinity Test, when scientists from the Manhattan Project detonated the world's first nuclear device in New Mexico. That moment has been called the dawn of the atomic age. The unsuspecting civilians that would be contaminated with fallout from the Trinity test, now called downwinders, made clear that this would be an age defined not only by the promise of nuclear technology, but also its devastation, which would be fully demonstrated only a few weeks later. The detonation of atomic bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan in 1945 killed between 110 and 210,000 people. In the aftermath of that destruction, Albert Einstein, J. Robert Oppenheimer, and Manhattan Project scientists and engineers created the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, an organization meant to warn and educate the public about the potential harm of their creation. The public's imagination during the post-war period would be filled with visions of nuclear-powered transportation and endless supplies of energy. A giant of limitless power at man's command. But the inventors of the technology behind the atomic bomb were more concerned about the prospect of an arms race and worldwide nuclear war. There is no denying that since that moment, the shadow of the atom bomb has been across all our lives. Over its more than 75 year history, the Bulletin has monitored existential threats to humanity and communicated insights to the public through its magazine, its website, its events, and the Doomsday Clock, which visualizes humanity's metaphorical proximity to global catastrophe. Martil Langsdorf, an artist married to a Manhattan Project engineer, created the Doomsday Clock in 1947 as the first cover image for the Bulletin's magazine. It was initially set at seven minutes to midnight. The clock first moved in 1949 when Bulletin editor Eugene Rabinowitz decided to move the minute hand forward to three minutes to midnight in response to the Soviet Union testing its first nuclear weapon, years ahead of when many in the U.S. government thought possible. In all, the clock has moved 25 times, first as dictated by Rabinowitz and later as set by the Bulletin's Science and Security Board. The clock has moved closer and further away in response to a variety of technological and diplomatic events. At the end of the Cold War and the signing of the Nuclear START Treaty, the Doomsday Clock moved the furthest from midnight it's ever been, 17 minutes to midnight, highlighting humanity's potential to prioritize peace and move back the clock. Today, the Doomsday Clock represents the judgment of leading science and security experts about the threat to human existence with a focus on man-made threats, nuclear risk, climate change, and new disruptive technologies like artificial intelligence and new biotechnology. The clock is watched closely by scientists and policymakers but it has also been a prominent feature in pop culture since its emergence. It has been a thematic device in feature films like Dr. Strangelove, the Jurassic World series, and Justice League. It's been described in popular songs by artists like The Who, Smashing Pumpkins, and Bright Eyes. It's been a motif of video games like Rise of Nations, books like The Imposter, the fantasy novel Wielding a Red Sword, and comic books like Watchmen. Throughout its history, the Doomsday Clock has helped focus global attention on the gravest threats to the planet. More than 75 years since it was first introduced, the clock remains an enduring symbol of the promise and peril of humanity's technological prowess.